warm spring day. Wake um, up, my days. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my name is Erica Gorgani. I've uh, been the associate executive director here at Life for the last year and a half. I've been here since my sixth year with Rybach, um, starting out as the education director. Um, and I'm so glad to have you all here in this space, and we're glad to have John come here talking about this very important topic. Um, first, I just want to ask a few things just to orient us. Is, is this anyone's first time here at the farm? In this building. In this building? Okay, great. Most of you have been here, and that's great to hear. Um, just on a personal note, I like to kind of acknowledge where we are at, and I know about this time of year, I look forward to, in this space, uh, those honey locust trees. I don't know if anyone noticed them, but this is the time. And they smell so good. When the wind hits you the right way, and I've been watching them every day that I'm here, and they're finally blooming, and they smell really good. But um, this land that we're on, uh, Right Rock Farms, it's 20 acres. Um, it's the ancestral land of the Massachusetts tribe uh, and the Pawtucket people. Um, in the early 1600s, the White family settled here, and the farm has been in production uh, for all those years, primarily by the Bach family. Most of you are familiar with the farm, you know a lot of this history. Um, but we are super grateful to be uh, here as a direct result of community support. Um, so people came together to save this land and this property from development. Um, so we are here in turn to serve you, to serve the community. So this is one of many community events that we like to put on. Um, a lot of you might know of our family farm nights in the summertime. So we're looking forward to having that back again um, after COVID. Last year was our first year trying it out again. And it's just something that people love and they miss. So we hope to see you there. And please take a look at our website uh, for the many events that are always going on. There is a small sheet at the back in addition to where John has a sign-up sheet. If you want to get our newsletter, it is jam-packed with information every week about goings-on here at the farm and also uh, in the community. So we hope that you will uh, join us. And also we have an online farm store with lots of products from all around New England. So it's pretty great and pretty convenient. So if you want to check that out. And I'll stop talking now and I'll introduce uh, the, the main event here. John Kilborn is a, is a board member for WL Farm, where, uh, right off the farm, I was going to say WL up. Um, and we're very lucky to have him. Um, and so many of you know that John uh, is an attorney in his day job for the EPA. Um, but he's also been very involved with the Mystic River Water, so um, Water Shed Association. Um, and he's been involved with this fish ladder project, um, an integral part of that. Um, so we are grateful to have him here tonight to talk about this important topic. Yeah. With that, I'll hand it over. Erica, thank you. I would like to, to mention, thanks for that gracious uh, introduction, Erica. I would like to mention that Eric has just been uh, uh, appointed uh, uh, our new executive director. Oh, wow. She's going to be replacing uh, our <laughs> team. So, um, what is a 
What is a, uh, anyway, what is an alewife? Well, an alewife, uh, a herring, also known as an alewife, is this relatively small fish, about yay, yay big, silver. They school, um, and as you can see, they're, they're, they're in kind of dense packs to protect themselves against all the, the predators. So there are two types of river herring, what we know as alewife and the blueback herring. Our migration is more alewife, and you can't tell, I, I can't tell the difference. It takes a really seasoned eye to be able to tell the difference between an alewife and a blueback. I'm just going to refer to the her herring or, or alewife. Um, these are, uh, are migratory fish, and um, there's other types of herring, herring that you might eat, uh, pickled, uh, hippered. They're an ocean, ocean herring. They stay in the ocean. They don't, they don't come up in, into fresh water. These are, are also referred to as river, river herring. So what, what, makes, what makes herring special? This is a little, a little, complicated, um, a little complicated side, but they're, um, they're, they're what's called anadromous fish. So they live, in, they live uh, most of their life in the, in the ocean. So these fish are, are in the ocean in Boston Harbor, um, and we don't quite know where they live uh, most, most of the time. But then when they sexually mature after about three or four years, they start to go from the uh, salt water uh, into the fresh water. So in the late spring, they uh, come, the, the, the adults uh, come up to the uh, fresh waters and they, they, lay, they lay their eggs. Um, and you know, each one release around 600, 60,000 to 300,000 uh, eggs. And the, so the, the adults uh, migrate up to the fresh water and then quickly, fairly quickly return back to the ocean. So the, 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 the eggs that uh, you'll see there, they, they incubate and they hatch uh, in, the, in the fresh water. And so I've been involved with these fish and I asked one of the, uh, uh, we've had really close coordination with the, the marine biologists in the Department of Marine Fisheries, is, why would a fish go from salt water and then exert all this pressure in his body to change from the salt water to, to, to the fresh water, which puts, it, it has to go through a lot of changes. And I've read an article about it. I'm, I'm a lawyer, not a, not a scientist, but it, a lot of stuff with the kidneys, a lot of energy to go from salt to fresh. Why would it do that? And he said, we don't know. We're like, really? <laughs> no? It seems like a big thing, but one of the thing, one of the ideas is that there's less predation in the in the fresh water because um, uh, you have the masses of fish and there's a lot of predation but, but less than in the ocean. So the, the, the young grow and uh, they, they'll spend um, uh, you know they'll, they'll spend uh, in the fresh water they'll, they'll spend much longer than the adults and they'll go back to the ocean in uh, 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 early summer to, to late fall, they go back to the ocean and they mature for about two to four years. And then when they, they're ready, when they mature, they come back to the exact same, most of them come back to the exact same stream. So, so we have herring that are Mystic, <coughs> Mystic River and Aboriginal River herring, which is, so we kind of have, we have our, we have our own, we have our own stuff. And, oh, all right. So this this is uh, this is this picture is taken in Mystic Lake. Uh, this shows the juvenile herring uh, schooling, ready to uh, run back run back to the run back to the ocean. You see see each one of these tiny little things is a is a, a juvenile herring. And if people have questions, uh, just raise your hand. I I, I, I like interruptions. So. so these are the tiny tiny little juvenile herring, um, and you can see the size here, it's the pencil, and they're tiny little fish. This is from, um, uh, I got to ride shotgun in, I got to ride shotgun in, with a scientist who was capturing juvenile herring uh, in about five or six lakes in Massachusetts to assess how these different lakes, how they're doing producing producing herring. It was kind of fun, it was at late at, late at night, and we, he threw, he threw a net out and, and captured these, these herring and counted them and, and, and let them let them go. Um, and and this was, this was these are these are from Horn Pond, which is
is up in Woburn. I'll, I'll show you where, where it is. But he said that Horn Pond is, was especially good at uh, uh, producing producing these juvenile juvenile herring. So, so um, oh, so uh, what what do, what do what do herring eat? They eat mostly um, small small uh, water bugs. Or the, the small, kind of very small shrimp-like creatures. Um, and it's called a zooplankton. And, and if, you know, if, if you're talking to biologists, it's not zooplankton, it's spelled Z-O-O, -O, it's zooplankton. So just be very careful, because they'll think you're, you know, you, you don't know what you're talking about. It'll show that you're, you're an amateur. So I made that mistake. <laughs> biologists looked at me, but, so, um, so the, the lakes, so, so they, they eat, they eat, um, they eat the, um, uh, the, the zooplankton, which feed from the, from, from uh, uh, small aquatic plants. And the you know, lakes can only, so, only hold so many fish. It's like, a, it's like cattle in a field. I mean, you can only have so many cattle in a field because they eat, eat the grass. And, and they, can, like, they can only support so many fish. And uh, the uh, lakes can only support so many, so many fish. And so the idea is to try to get fish into as much habitat as possible. And that's something I'll, I'll, I'll be talking about. But so <coughs> here's a schematic of the, of the, the migration pathway, Boston Harbor, here's Mystic Lake, and this is the uh, Earhart Dam, there's a dam here. Um, no fish ladder here, which is a fish passage, uh, but they open up the gates every day, and so the fish have no problem getting up here. Mystic River, Here's the Mystic Lake Dam in this upper and lower Mystic Lake. There's um, a dam here, and there's a fish ladder here. So the fish, are, and a fish ladder is a is a passage, uh, a, a sluice way, or small little steps that that allow a fish to get around, get get a, get over and around a, a dam. Otherwise, they're, they they just get blocked in front of the dam and can't get any 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 further. So they, they go up the uh, Aberjona into Winchester. This is the Mill Pond Dam. And then uh, Wedge Pond here. And then Horn Pond Brook. If, if you know the Horn Pond Brook, it's by a little uh, uh, bikeway. And then up into Horn Pond. So this is the, and Horn Pond is pretty much the last place they, they're going to get to. Uh, and there's a scally dam here. Uh, I'll be showing you more pictures there. But this is the, this is where they you know, they they come up, and then they go they, they go back they go back back down. Yes. Is it about ten miles? What's that? Is it about ten miles or twelve miles or something? Yeah, about that. About that. Okay. About that. Well, yeah, and they'll they'll go further. I mean, they'll they'll go as they'll go as far, you know, they'll, they'll go as far as they can. And I don't I don't know quite quite why some stop here. And then you know some will stop here and, and lay their eggs here, but with why some keep keep going. But there there are much lar longer uh, uh, alewife runs in, in Maine, in other places, <coughs> but in Maine in particular. Um, are there, is there a spawning taking place in Wedge Pond? Uh, I think so. Yes, yes. So, yeah. I, I live on Wedge Pond. Yeah, okay. and uh, I see the. Uh, um, at, at, at my own beach front, I can see the, the young uh, herring and right. see all the seagulls that come uh, in May and June to, to fish for them in Wedge Pond. You, you, can, you can hear them sometimes. I have another, uh, another uh, friend who lives along the uh, upper, uh, upper Mystic, and he, he can hear them at night. And sometimes it wakes them up because they, they, they circle, they splash. And you, they, they have this kind of circular splash. They don't, don't know exactly what they're doing, chasing each other, but the lake, the, 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 um, the, the, the female will lay the eggs, and then the male will fertilize the eggs with um, what's called milt. Um, and so they do this circular thing along, along the sides of the river, uh, mostly the, the, the lake side, but, but sometimes in the, in the river as well. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, are the herring in the uh, Cape Cod Canal the bluebacks versus alewife? Uh, the, 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 they, they, they migrate together, 
So I don't I don't know I don't know in the in the Cape Cod Canal in the Cape whether it's more blueback or, or alewife. Oh. Something I, I think it may be more blueback on the on the Cape. Um, so, but we have, we have, we'll have we have both bluebacks and alewives <coughs> in our in our uh, in our migration. If anybody lives in Arlington, they also go up the tiny little mill brook and they spawn at Crooks Hollow and also just in the cemetery just before the bridge is put on the right thanks yeah they, they, they've been there in the past week yeah and that's why alewife brook is named uh, alewife and they'll go back there if it wasn't polluted <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so um uh so so one of the goals uh, uh, of, of the herring fishery is to try to rebuild it rebuild the stock of herring because the herring uh, uh, populations crashed. You can see uh, this is uh, in the 60s, and this is measures commercial landing of, of, of herring, um, which is now uh, uh, it's, it's highly regulated. But it's the, the herring um, it's the herring amount of herring migration has, has fallen uh, over, over over the years due to over overfishing. And due to due to habitat habitat loss. So the other the other loss of um, the other loss of, of herring is to, is due to due, due to predation. But good that's good and bad because the herring are uh, what's called a foundation fish or a forage fish, a prey fish. They're really a key to the ecosystem, a key to, to restoring uh, the, the Abajona. Uh, because they provide the food for a lot of other higher level uh, animals, such as the, the great blue heron. heron. And you can see um, this is taken in the, in, the, in the mill pond right in Winchester and right, right by the dam there. So that's, that's one predator. Another predator is the, uh, the double breasted cormorant. Which uh, uh, very voracious, uh, 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 very voracious uh, uh, feeder of, of herring, and you can see the you can see these animals all all in the mill pond. If you go, they're they're there right now. Uh, another one is the herring gull, the snatching <laughs> uh, unfortunate herring. And this is this is the this is the bridge right in uh, the dam right in Winchester. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, this is uh, another a black crown night heron, um, and if you if you're on if you're in Winchester and you're on the, the, the bridge right there, there's a, a a birch tree to the right, and it, it, sometimes there are like 10, 12 uh, uh, black crown night herons. Uh, uh, just there. <coughs> these, these black crown night herons, you you only see them in Winchester at this time of year. They they live in the uh, Cape Island. Uh, islands in the harbor, and they follow they follow the her they follow the herring right up up the river and snatch them, mm -hmm. snatch them. But and so here we have a kind of fun I don't know well, I, I think it's an interesting picture of a you know, great great blue heron uh, uh, a herring gull and a, and a, a, a black crown night heron all waiting for the, the fish. Uh, what happen what happens is is that. The fish coming down get hung up on this lip here, and so it's kind of like an all-you-can-eat buffet for <laughs> the birds. So, um, so, the, so the, the, the herring uh, are, are, are also uh, uh, fish, also food for um, uh, larger fish like uh, striped bass. Uh, uh, one of the um, uh, uh, fishing articles that I, I, I got advertised: uh, herring crazed stripers. <laughs> and so, you know, so the strikers will come after the, the striped bass, which are the larger uh, fish. They come up, uh, they come up the river. They follow, uh, they follow the herring. Uh, they, there's a lot of. I've seen people catch um, uh, uh, striped bass right in the Amelia Hart Dam. Uh, I haven't seen me catch any of these. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I've also seen people catch herring. They also come up all to the all the way up to the Upper Mystic. Uh, Upper Mystic Dam. I've seen people catch uh, striped bass there, but not not me. Not me. <laughs> and yet, so, um, but um, so they so so they they will follow they will follow the the, the, the heron. Um, so 
So the, the, uh, and it's also for other other large <coughs> sea mammals, also raccoons and other other mammals. So this is really kind of a key fish to re restoring the ecosystem. So so the the, the, the um, fish are attacked by the uh, birds, and then the birds are taken by photographers. <laughs> <laughs> This is taken, my wife assembled this, I have to thank her, uh, assembled this like three or four nights ago, we were going downtown for our, our walk, and, and this, is, this is all in one night, you know, all, these, all the, 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 the photographers uh, catching the, uh, trying to get pictures of, of the fish. So, um, if you're into bird photography, the Horn Pond, um, uh, well, Horn Pond has uh, a photography website, uh, a Facebook page, Amazing pictures of, of birds there. Uh, so uh, then, and then there's there's bald eagles. Um, uh, this is bald eagles taken to Mystic Lake. I I've, I've lived here. Well, I've lived here for 20 plus years, and I've, I've, I've seen like game here. There were never were bald, were bald eagles. I'm sure other other people, you know, other long you know, long time will, will say the same thing. Never bald eagles. Now we have a nesting pair in, this, in Mystic Lake. Um, I've had a, a bald eagle fly over my house, and I saw one fly down, you know, Main Street, which is in, right, hanging out on the, the light stanchions in um, the, uh, 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 the the field right by the high school, which is to, to me is just kind of you know, growing up. Harry, uh, uh, eagles or something, you know. In Maine, you'd be lucky if you saw a bald eagle. But, you know, here they here they are, um, and I think it's, it's largely because of, because they herring. Um, so the, that the, the herring are attracting the, the the eagles, which is good. One not so good thing is the this is um, uh, this is uh, uh, sorry <coughs> that is uh, that that. Eagle is called um, KZ, and the, the, you can see there's a band right there, and the photographers, their their cameras are so good that they can see the band, and so they know that, that where this eagle came from, its name, it's, and they, it's KZ, and it flying around Mystic Lake, and KZ had a girlfriend, um, which unfortunately called MK, uh, which unfortunately ingested rats. Um, in Arlington and perished and died uh, from the rat poison. Mm -hmm. This is a picture that was taken by the Cape Cod Wildlife Center trying to save that eagle and it, it couldn't be, it, it, she perished. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, so that's, that's something, there's, a, there's some legislation to try to, to, try to uh, 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 prevent this and reduce the use of, of these anti-coagulant anti uh, uh, Pesticide, and so they're trying to they're trying to, to reduce that. We, we do have some 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 rats here in the farm uh, in the back fields, but we don't we don't use that that pesticide. So um, you know it's, it's it's so it's interesting that you know you you have a success you have success, but success in an urban environment does bring these 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 these, these, these issues. Other other predators are. are Kids, this is this is taken. I think it's taken around time, town day uh, when there was tons. Of, you can't see here, but there were tons of herring here, and kids trying to scoop them up. Um, they are they are a threatened species, so you can't you can't take them. Um, you can't really catch them on a, on a hook and line. Uh, you, you have to you have to net them if you want to catch them. I, I haven't seen too many people try to try to net them, and I haven't seen really too many kids go go after them. So. So, um, so a, a little. So that's kind of the the, the biology of of, of the, the herring and where we are. I want to step a little bit to, to the, his, the history of the herring and what so like what connection does herring have to a farm? Well, probably very little. But uh, in the colonial days, there's colonial records that uh, the uh, indigenous peoples used herring uh, and fish to grow corn. 
they have uh, they have mounds of, they have mounds of corn and a three sisters growing system where they grow grew, uh, corn, beans, and squash. Um, and they would take the herring. There's so many herring uh, running in the colonial times that, that they could, instead of eating, I'm sure they ate them, they could use them as, as, as surplus, they could use them as fertilizer. And the, the indigenous peoples taught the co early colonists this trick of using the herring to help the corn grow. So um, that's the tie-in to the, time the farm. So, um, um, so Winchester had a herring, the Mystic, Rick, the Mystic River uh, had a herring run, uh, most likely for thousands and thousands of years when indigenous peoples were here, but also when, when, when the colonists were here. And we have records uh, from uh, the 18, late 1800s uh, that the town archivist Ellen Knight uh, found for me. There was a society for the, uh, a committee for the preservation of fish that was officially formed in uh, Winchester. Uh, and its sole purpose was to protect the alewives because they were important, they were important to support the uh, sport fishery and, and for food. Um, so the, these historic, these historic uh, the records, um, uh, you know, the document the fact that there were great numbers of herring that were taken for food and other other purposes. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Maybe maybe fertilizers in, in the 1800s. And thousands of barrels of herring were caught in the 1800s in you know in Winchester. And this the, the, the records I think were interesting to read about how they were protecting the the, the, the run against people who would put in dams e illegally, and then and then this is, this committee would have to fight to get rid of get rid of the dams. I think they even used dynamite at one point to get to get rid of rid of the dams to make sure they were they were coming up uh, coming up to um, uh, uh, coming up to Winchester. Um, in 1870, Winchester built a fishway over the Center Falls Dam, and that's the dam in uh, right by the the, the library. Um, and, uh, and there was a fishway. There was a fishway built in the Mystic. The Mystic Lake Dam was was built, I think, in the mid 1800s to, to create a water reservoir. And there was a fish ladder, a fish ladder put put in there as well. Um, uh, all right. So so what we see here, what we what we have here, is uh, this is the old Mystic Lake Dam, and you can see here's this fish ladder here. And so this is from 1898. Uh, uh, so so it looks like it's, this looks like ice. So it looks like early you know, uh, uh, early spring here. Um, and we have here a guy named uh, E. A. Uh, Brack. And Mr. Brackett uh, uh, was a Winchester resident, and he, he was the one that created design for that um, for that fish ladder. Um, he uh, was also um, a state game uh, a commissioner. Um, he he had a fish hatchery. There's a fish hatchery. If you, it's right on South Border Road. There's an old um, uh, uh, older house, a fieldstone house, has been been. Uh, uh, Added on to, but that was a fish hatchery, and he he was you know, one of the, the committee members of the committee to pre preserve uh, fish, and he uh, uh, grew uh, salmon and shad, and he tried to uh, he he introduced tried to uh, uh, introduce salmon to the uh, uh, to the average owner. Can you imagine having having a salmon run in the average owner? Well, you can see that didn't quite didn't quite work out. But one of his hopes was to get salmon a salmon so plentiful that the, the workmen would complain about being fed salmon like they were, like he said, like they were a hundred hundred years ago. So in the 1700s, he he had knowledge that the, the workmen were fed up with salmon because they were getting getting so much of it. Um, now, why am I why am I spending so so this other interesting thing about Mr. Uh, uh, Brackett is that he was uh, a sculptor and he um, was an ab ardent abolitionist 
and he was um, commissioned by the abolition, abolitionists in Winchester to uh, go down to Harper's Ferry, this was in the 1800s, and carve, uh, uh, take measurements of John Brown, the, the abolitionist who, who uh, tried to um, uh, attack the, uh, the Harper's Ferry arsenal. And he created a bust, which is in Tufts a University Library um, uh, of, John, of John Brown. Um, and another crazy, another weird, really weird thing about, about when I found out about this is he lived right uh, behind my house. <laughs> so, so I'm reading about this guy, and I'm like, he lives in the octagonal house. It's like, oh my god, this guy who is so into fish lives right, like, right you know, next to me. And I said to my wife, I said, he lived in, he lived in historic octagonal house. He said, We've got to, it was on sale, so we, we've got to buy that house. <laughs> and my wife said, she said, I can't live in a, in, 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 in sort of a high octagonal house. She said, I can't live there. I can't live in So that, that, is, that didn't happen. But, um, so that there's, if, if you really want to take a deeper dive, and then Ellen Knight did a, has an article, uh, our, our archivist historian, has an article about the, 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 his exploits uh, uh, going down to Harper's Ferry and taking these measurements it was no easy feat. Um, but a little digression. Um, so, so we, we, we have, so, so kind of bringing us more up to the, the, the current, the current, um, in, in the current day, in the 1900s, the way I said we had that old fish ladder. In, in the 1900s, there were so many obstructions, there was so much pollution, the average owner river was, was, was really polluted. And the herring, the airwife died out. They, they didn't, they didn't come up. There was no herring, probably, probably for a hundred, hundred years. And the Clean Water Act, um, uh, uh, the Clean Water Act, enforced by my uh, Environmental Protection Agency, cleaned, cleaned up, cleaned up the water, and the herring, the herring started to come back. I don't know exactly what this, this, this picture was, but this is a bucket brigade um, that. So that was probably that was probably maybe 20 years ago. It was uh, not, when it, was it? Uh, 2008. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, so this is the old old dam. So so uh, uh, people would, would net net the fish, put them in buckets. They would bring. I didn't. I've never seen this, but bring them up there and dump them dump them in, into into the, into the river. Um, to get as many fish as, as they could uh, up. Um, but the, the, for, for flood control reasons, the state needed to uh, fix, the, fix the dam. And when they did, they uh, put in a new, uh, oops, a new fish ladder. Um, they put in a new fish ladder there. So the first, the first year of operation of, of the fish ladder was in 2012. Um, and so, you can, so, so what's really kind of first amazing, first amazing thing that so this graph is a lot of information in, in this graph, so we'll just I'll, I'll walk you through it. But the first year of, uh, of operation, almost 200,000 fish went through the fish ladder. They had volunteers. There's some I, some volunteers who were counting the herring. Uh, thank you for, for doing that. But 200,000 fish got, came through it immediately, which is a, which is a huge a huge number, and then as you can see here, you know the, the numbers stay kind of steady, and boom, in 2015, they almost doubled. And the the, the marine fisheries uh, folks here hypothesized that what happened was is that the first fish came here in 2012, and as I talked to four of you about that that circle where they go back and they spend two or three years, and and so. In 2015, um, you know, so in 2012, you have all of a sudden you have the huge area of Upper Mystic Lake now available to the fish. As I said, more habitat, more food, more fish, and so now you have in 2012 you have a lot, many more juveniles returning. So 2012, more 2012, more juveniles come back. They grow, and in 2015, boom. You, you have those that, that bigger class uh, uh, coming coming back, um, and as you can see here, you know the, the, the increase kind of continues. You have uh, uh, eight hundred thousand fish fish here, 
uh, at, at the high at the highest point, and then a dramatic well, this is, coincides with COVID, but um, a dramatic drop here. And the high, high point. What's that? It was hard. We weren't counting, so that's a factor in counting. The, right. Well, there, there was some video. There was video counting here. So the, the, these bars here, the counts are, are from actual people like like yourself who who, who count the fish, uh, stand over a little platform and have a clicker and count and count the fish. I get ten <coughs> increments, and then there's some computer modeling that extrapolates the, the individual count to get the overall population count here. Um, but the fish crashed, not crashed, but remarkably it, it decreased in 2020 and in subsequent years. And the hypothesis is that there was a drought in 2016, and that when you have the drought, you have the lower water levels. Unfortunately, the fish can get up, but they have trouble coming back down, and they get they get delayed coming back down, and then the predation from the freshwater uh, fish uh, uh, increases, and so. That that's that's what that's what happened here. Um, so so lower levels here, but in 2020, so in 2022 we had about 400,000 fish, and this looks like it's it decreased, but the um, the numbers decreased statewide. But in 2022, last year we had the largest number of herring, the largest herring run run in the Commonwealth. So we beat the Damascus River, we beat the Herring River, right? So, so we were we were number one. Uh, so, so it's kind of sad that they're sad that they're going down. But, but I go to I go to uh, uh, there's a Herring meeting a Herring meeting every uh, every year in in, uh, in in near the Cape, and I, I like it when we're number one just to get some respect from <laughs> the Cape Cod people. Yes. I, I think it, I think it's it's because of these these, these lower these lower drought years. Um, that's that's the so that's the that's my hypothesis is the drought years. It'll be interesting to see if that you know if that continues. If so, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if that continues. Uh, then you know you know why it's not because I don't think we had all drought years here. So so yes. Yeah. So from the period when the pollution was so bad, there was nothing in the river, and all of a sudden that they came back. So what's the memory of the, the instinct to go back to the average uh, of what was there something that's done some jobs to go that it was that was an empty river for a while. Well, um, I think that the fish the, the, the fish were hanging out in, in the estuary. So I, I don't. I, there, there wasn't. A, there wasn't a stocking program like like Mr. Ben, Mr. Uh, 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 um, Bracken. Bracken, thank you. Mr. Bracken tried to. There's no. There was no stocking. I, I, I don't think there's been any. There hasn't been any or much stocking of herring uh, uh, in, in the Mystic. Um, so so what what you saw? I think I think what was going on is that the fish were were, were in the were in the ocean. They may have been coming up. Uh, uh, into the into the kind of the estuary, but but not coming up any any further, and and then and then what's that? And then it just into the into the brack the brackish water, and then as as the as the water gets get cleaner, they they would come up they would come up further, and and they would be up in the in the in the lower Mystic, and then they find this great new passage, and they shoot they shoot through it. So you can see they have a tremendous drive. Uh, for the, this flow, they're really they're influenced by the water temperature and the smell of the river and the flow to, to drive up to the, the fresh water. So one of the concerns about the decline is due to the fact that this river here is school with the Atlantic area and mackerel, and the fishing uh, the fishing uh, trawlers that catch the Atlantic area could also be catching. Some of our fish, literally, right? And we're trying to do something about it, you know. But uh, you know, it's, it's we'll see what can happen. Yeah, I think Noah has uh, some limits on river herring in, in their catches of sea sea herring. Yes. And, yes. Uh, unfortunately, the caught they dump 
them back in and having our very uh, survival uh, pointed. We may get caught in the net and pushed out on the, on the deck and then throw it over. So they don't survive. Yeah. In that, you know, <coughs> the limits that the law puts on them, unfortunately, doesn't help as much as they could. Uh, they, it's absolutely true. They do school with them, and uh, there's no way you can not catch them. Right. Right. And you have a, a large kid flutter troll then. Right. Right. So, so that's one. Of, that's one of the pieces that when you have a rider, when you have a migratory animal, they are subject to these disruptions wherever they go. And so, you know, if you have one, one area that's in trouble, the whole migration uh, suffers. Um, One question? Yes. Uh, has anybody modeled the, the number of herring that the environment can support or sustain or compared to historical record? Or? Yes, yes. Uh, historical records, uh, no, but um, th there's a recent paper, a uh, recent paper by uh, um, uh, someone from UMass, and he calculated, uh, he, he did a calculation about the, uh, I, I forget, but he, he came up with a figure for uh, the size of the lake and how many herring it could support. And so it, 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 you know, it, it basically plateaus. After a certain amount, the, 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 the river, the lake can't support, um, um, can't support the herring. It's called carrying capacity. <coughs> carrying capacity, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. I think it was, it, so I, don't, I forget that, I think it's 1,000 fish per hectare. Something like that, but he did. He did. There is a calculation there, which is helpful for the the, the conservationists or the, the managers because it, you know, if you have the, if you're at the top of that curve in the plateau, it does mean maybe you can open up the herring runs to commercial uh, commercial take. And there's two rivers in Massachusetts which the marine fisheries people think are are are, are, are at their capacity. And they would be willing, and they want to open it up to commercial fisheries because they those they think that um, having a commercial fishery helps helps uh, get advocates for the fish because um, you know people start their livelihood relies on herring. It starts to build a strong constituency for the for the for the fish. Okay, I just want to acknowledge you for your work for River Herring because you play a very principal role in getting the fish ladder at, you know, at the Santa Falls Dam in Winchester. And that created new habitat for these fish. And that allowed a larger carrying capacity right. in our watershed. And I Sends it up to Winchester, but then this is what we have is basically a traffic jam. Mm. This was taken. I took this in 2015, and this is right below uh, uh, for the Winchesterites. This is right below the Center Falls Dam, right next to the ice cream place, um, right over, the, right by the bridge, and all of these things here are are hair. I mean, it, it was just this was a, a town day. I think it was town day 2015. The herring were just just just, no. just chopped up. They they couldn't get anywhere, and they were just they were just you know massed massed there. Um, and so it was it was actually really good because it was, it was town day 2015. We had to do uh, thanks to thanks to the Watershed Association who did water quality testing and, and the Incas uh, who paid for for water quality testing. Um, we we had to do. To, so we had, we had the idea, I knew the fish were coming, and we had the idea of putting in a fish ladder, but the state said you've got to test the water quality first, because if the water's too hot, the fish can't <coughs> live, they have to dissolve oxygen in the water, so we want to make sure that, that, that we're sending the fish out to a place where they can breathe. And we wanted to test for nutrients, too, because there's too much nutrients. The nutrients lead to algae, and algae is, is, can be toxic, and, can suck the, the oxygen out of, out of the water. So we had two years of water quality testing uh, and, 
luckily that showed the water quality was good enough, wasn't great, but it was similar to other places in the watershed that, that, that supported, supported the, the herring. So in 2015, the town day, just masses of fish, and I was able to get the, the, the town manager, the, the, the DPW head, our, our two our, 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 our two state our senators there and our state rep <laughs> uh, Mike Day Mike our state rep looked over he looked over he saw the fish and he looked at me he said this is amazing this is great I said yeah isn't it great Mike this is <laughs> what do you need how much money do you need uh, I was like this is we just got the okay and so on but he was so excited he was like he wanted to he wanted to help right away um, and the town uh, the town was doing. So the town was doing flood work on the Center, Center Falls Dam, and luckily we, we, we got in there uh, quick enough so that they designed, uh, uh, designed the flood control to, to take uh, a fish ladder. And so we got, we got money, and so now there's a fish ladder in the Mystic Lake, uh, in, in, sorry, in the Center Falls Dam here, and it's basically, it's just a sluice way, you can look over here, that, that the water flows down here, takes a turn, and shoots out here, and provides, there's no water, you can't see any water flowing there, but it provides an attractive flow for the fish. And that's just the, here's where the fish, this is just right after it's constructed. Here's where the fish come in, they go down here, right there, here. And this thing here is a slot for a fish camera. Uh, we have a, 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 there's a fish cam that uh, uh, records the fish. Fortunately, there's no no live feed. It's a little it's a little too complicated. We couldn't get a live feed. But there's a, a video a camera that counts the fish, um, and uh, we've had really good really good success. The past two years have been 100,000 fish, 25 percent of the total of the total uh, uh, run have come through uh, a wind ship. Uh, Come through Winchester, um, so that's pretty. So there's there's our our fancy side things to DPW, and, and we're gonna I'm gonna eventually put in a, a try to put in more informational side, but that's that's what we got for now. So um, all right, so 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 we got rid of we got Mystic Lake, we got rid of that obstacle, we set up to Winchester, we got rid of that obstacle, and the next obstacle is Horn Pond. And this is Scow this is Scowry Dam uh, at the very southern end of Horn Pond in, in Woburn. Um, and this is the there's a rock spillway that fish can kind of get up, sort of. <laughs> if you walk around Horn Pond, there's a there's a, um, uh, a, a, a the base of the Scowry Dam. Sometimes you'll see hundreds of fish, just like that picture that I showed you before. Hundreds of fish swarming, trying to get up, and a few of them can get up this rock. Spillway, which wasn't really meant to be, to be uh, uh, meant to be a fish ladder. Uh, I, I do my fish my monitoring at the top of the spillway. Sometimes I've seen 12 fish, 16 fish. I think, I think people have seen 20 fish get get up. But um, luckily, through um, there's money sitting uh, from a cleanup on the Superfund site. There's money sitting waiting for improvements to this spillway. And this is kind of hard. I know this is a little hard to see, but that spillway is right up here. The pool where I talk about where all the fish are here is right here. And this new fish ladder is going to be built here, a bridge here, and then go up to Horn Pond here, and maybe a little viewing nook uh, here. But people will be able to see the fish. This will be open channel to be able to see the fish right, right here. The uh, guy from um, uh, NOAA National uh, Ocean is really excited about this because there's very few fish ladders that are right next to a major population center, right next to a big, uh, 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 kind of big parking lot. So this is in the works. It's being designed, 30% design. The best thing is we have money for it. So um, that's that's pretty um, that's pretty exciting. Um, so, and, and, and the goal is to, if we get that into Winchester, into the Four Pond, that's going to be, uh, we'll, we'll keep the fish growing, and we'll, we'll try, you know, as, as David said, we'll hopefully interact, counteract some of the overfishing and, and have one of the largest uh, runs in the Commonwealth. 
So a lot of so a lot of this um, uh, work has been helped by uh, we provide volunteer for the Whisper Watershed Association. Two things that they do, I, I urge you to get on um, uh, their their email list. It's, 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 they have a sign up back there. Two things that that, that they do that that uh, help help. One of them helps the fish is water quality monitoring. So we've dedicated by the volunteers who monitor the the water quality and produce a, in conjunction with EPA, produce a, um, a scorecard, bacteria scorecard here. You can see um, the, 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 the river here, kind of gets, you can see this is a B, um, and, and, and some of this is in the River here. Uh, I don't know if you see the work here uh, is, is at D. Yeah, it's, it's very low flow, and there's some infiltration of bacteria here. Mystic lakes do very well, and the average on it uh, is, is a C for, for bacteria in terms of uh, swimming and boating. Um, but this allows allows the scientists to keep track of how the river, you know, how, the, how the, the river system is doing, and, uh, and, and working on measures to to uh, uh, improve these, these these tributaries here. Um, the other thing, this is, I apologize for this, is kind of hard to read, but there's a, they're, they're missing the uh, Watershed Associates also working on trying to connect the entire uh, uh, watershed here through uh, the bike paths, walking paths, and trying to connect different parts of, uh, different parts, mostly in the lower part of the, uh, uh, lower, lower part of the river, there's a, a herring run, a 5K herring run uh, around, around here. Um, so uh, if you can go, you can go on uh, the, one of the Washington Association's uh, website for, for, further, uh, for further details. Um, so spring is an exciting time because these herring come back. Um, and really, uh, 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 you know, I, I find it kind of fun. But also, there's two, two more migrations that I can't, I can't help myself because there's two more migrations that, that happen in, in the area. And well, I know you came here for herring, but <laughs> but it won't be it's just too, too slide. And what what is uh, salamanders in vernal pools? This is a spotted salamander I took two years ago. My, my wife found it actually. Um, uh, we had a fun Saturday night date, and we found uh, you know, a, a salamander going down to the vernal pool to uh, to, get to breed, just like just like the, just like the herring. Um, that happens every spring. Uh, and the other, the other migration is uh, the warbler waves, the birds, uh, pretty the yellow, yellow warbler, um, all, all other, many other types of warblers. Warren Pond is a great, the back of the woods there, a great place for, for, for birding. Um, so, uh, uh, another, another plug for another, another thing to, this is things to, to, to do. But, uh, Going back to the fish, as I said, it's really kind of, the, I find it remarkable how uh, you know, the, fish, the fish were here. I didn't know about it. People really didn't know. I mean, I, I think in the town, people didn't know about the fish, that they, that, that they had been coming up to Winchester, coming up all the way to Horn Pond for thousands of years. No one knew about it. But through these um, restoration efforts, the, the, the herring are coming back. The ecosystem is being restored, and the average zone is turning from a uh, stormwater sewer channel mm -hmm. to a, li a living, a living river. So, mm -hmm. I, and, and uh, hopefully, there's better, there's, there's even more to come. So, appreciate everybody's uh, coming here on a really warm night, and uh, uh, thanks, thanks for your, your interest. Um, I do want, I do want to thank the, the Watershed Association for their water sampling, which made it made it possible for um, uh, the, the, the uh, fish ladder, uh, the ANCA funded sampling, the town manager and the town DPW were uh, uh, great help, archivist Ellen Knight, board of selectmen, the state marine fisheries, so uh, uh, we're all, all really helpful. And if you want to get further involved, get on uh, uh, the, the Watershed uh, Watersh Associates mail, uh, mailing list. There's um, water, uh, herring monitoring. There's video, videos uh, of the Mystic Lake that we need if you can't sleep at night. You want to count the fish. It'll keep you up for a little while. And it's kind of strangely exciting to have to 
<laughs> these small little clips, and you're like, you know, count them and you can slow down. It's fun, it's fun. Um, and uh, water chest up in Google, and there's a lot of, a lot of activities. So, uh, again, thanks, thanks for interest, and uh, any, any questions? Yes, yes, sir. Hey, uh, yeah, hey, John, uh, uh, two questions, uh, or a question and a comment. Probably not news to most of the people in this audience, but if, you know, I always will take people uh, to the parking lot right there at the Mystic Lake Dams. You know, the, the map of yeah. you know, you know, you know, the watershed is you know, just create, it, 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 unless you actually see how it all interconnects. Right. You really don't understand it. But if anybody has not been down there you know, to look at that map right, right next to the dam, I mean, yeah. it's just a, it, 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 it's a marvelous, marvelous. Yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been at town, I've been on town days. We, we have a table at town day. Uh, I'll, I'll be there Saturday, and I've been, you know, I've been, I've, I'll, I'll show the people the fish. And they'll say, I said, where, where are the, and they said, where are the fish coming from? And I said, oh, they're coming from the ocean. Like, and they say, this leads to the ocean? <laughs> and, well, I, you know, I, I, I'm kind of like, I know this, but yeah, people don't, you know, you really don't see how Winchester is really intimately connected with the ocean. And you have to see my own. My question also is, is that I walk my Greyhound regularly along the upper Mystic Lakes, uh, half part of the long uh, the lakes, and I, it, it does appear that that the, spawn, the spawning activity, you know, right next to the shore, isn't as active this year as I've seen in, in previous years. I mean, is there any? Uh, I, I know there there is the count. I mean, is there any projection of what you know uh, this year's run is likely to be at this point? Uh, no, not not yet. It gets that gets done. Um, uh, that gets done done later. Maybe other people have have. have, have have their pulse. Uh, I'm mostly up at Warren Pond, and I haven't been uh, uh, you know, that typed into um, uh, what the exact count is. Yes, yes, sir. Back. So just thank you again for the talk. As a herring counter, let me say, tell you, it's great fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's really an awesome thing to go out there and stand over there. It can be a bit vertiginous, but it is really fun. And the other thing is, it absolutely connects you with what we're what we're trying to do. So as a, as a plug for the, the team um, and talk about capacity, remember that if we get out there and we count and we support the Mystic River Water, because it's a great group of people if you work with them, they're fabulous. And the second thing is, is that we can all be making small changes in what we do in our community to increase the capacity. Because we talked about why did the water clean up? They got rid of the tannings, they got rid of the tanneries in Woburn. And as you clean the water up, the carrying capacity goes up as we stop fertilizing our lawns, we stop getting out of So every one of us, I just, it's a great thing to do. So if you want to sign up and come down and stand on the dam, it's really fun. <laughs> and I did something really stupid yes, the other I day, that was going to tell on me, is that when the herring, when the water flow gets down, the, 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 the herring swimming downstream have more of a struggle because there's not as much water going over the dam and there's that big flat area. So stupidly, I'm going to admit it, I actually climbed over the fence and went down and saved about 75 or 100 fish as they were stuck out there. And if you run around, the birds go away. So I was scooping fish up and throwing them back into the river. But I'm not supposed to do that, but Ellen's going to tell them. And so I just, I'm admitting it. But I was, I, well, when he did that, I was standing on top of the bridge scaring the birds. So, <laughs> so there was a human bucket running, but it was me and Ellen running around on the we, deck. We've, we've tried, there's a problem with the spillway in the upper yeah. Mystic Dam. And yes. so been, I've been trying, I made a big effort three or four years ago to try to get them to fix that. Yeah. And, and they get thrown out of the sluice onto that big flat thing. Yeah. Now, if you're a bird and you're having a sushi buffet, it's a great yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to try to take another run at that with a new DCR commissioner. Hopefully, they'll, they promised to fix it and it didn't happen. So. so anyway, so that was a plug. Thank you, John. It's sure. a great opportunity. Thank you. Join thank us. You. You had a good uh, question? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with the carrying, going back to the carrying capacity, where you've kind of established that like the, the alewives or the herrings are kind of, kind of nearing back to their population and like normal population level and they don't really have too much pressure on the population anymore. Is there like uh, kind of thinking at the EPA to kind of 
take the resources that you've invested in uh, protecting this species and kind of pivot to another species yeah. now? And then, sure. and then kind of have the fishing uh, industry focus on the alewife instead and like kind of engage like that. Well, so, so when I'm answering that gentleman's question, uh, this person's figured out the figured out the kind of maximum based upon analysis of the number of lakes, what the what the what he thinks is the carrying capacity for the lakes. That doesn't mean the carrying capacity has been achieved. So there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, there's still you know dams and a lot of other other um, herring runs that that need that need to be removed. So it's <coughs> main, th there's there's two. There's two um, uh, herring runs in Massachusetts where the marine fisheries people of the state think that are, that are capable of being you know, harvested. Um, but that's, that's, only, that's only two. And there's many, many more that, that need help. So the effort still, the, the marine fisheries are still making concerted efforts to help other, to help, help a lot of the other um, uh, uh, fish you know, runs. Hi. Uh, so I was taking a boat ride in Boston Harbor, and while we were going under the Zaken Bridge, somebody said, uh, "Look up there! There are these gratings that have been cut in the bridge to mm -hmm. let light through yep. because alewives don't like to just go into dark places. Yes. So, so there's a little light that we yes. set for. How do they make it through that dark tunnel?" That they, they don't. No, they don't. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, uh, there are. So yes, the herring, the herring don't. The herring will not will not go through a, a long dark color. Um, they, mm -hmm. they they don't like it. And so um, we the the town uh, the, the town uh, put in I think three or four gratings to provide light through that through that color. Um, we have seen herring, not that many, uh, up in the upper Abijana, um, uh, beyond the high school. Uh, but most of the herring go up. You know, there's a split. There's a split right before the. There's a split before the high school, and so the, the, to get to Horn Pond, they don't have to go through that culvert. So, and so the, the culvert prevents a lot of a lot of them from going up. I've talked to marine fisheries people. And, and they're not really that concerned about it, and they would actually rather have the herring go up to Horn Pond because it's a lake, it's a little better, a little better habitat. Thank you. Yep. Yep. So, um, uh, yeah, thank you, John. Uh, so, I, I, as I mentioned before, uh, Wedge Pond, uh, uh, just one note, kind of partly off your comment earlier, one, uh, back during COVID, myself and three neighbors who live on the pond, we did a reverse herring run from Wedge Pond, and, made it with uh, our kayaks, uh, made it all the way down to Boston Harbor and even a little way up uh, Charles River. So it is, uh, is connected to three portage points. So. Right, right. One, I, I, I've done the same, I did, I did the same thing. My buddies and I put a, ca a canoe and kayak yeah. in, uh, in the average on it and we canoed down to the night shift brewery. Uh, <laughs> Bring our canoes, and everybody in the brewery is gonna. Who are these guys? <laughs> and it was a, it was like a, a, a Oktoberfest, oh, and it was, awesome. there were twenty somethings there, and they couldn't, they, they couldn't care less. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I did, so I did, I, and then I, we like, kayaked over to the casino, because I thought, oh great, I'll be, I can valet my kayak. <laughs> Parks, two town parks on Wedge Pond that could be, you know, um, further 
uh, improved, the one right across the street from Stop and Shop. Or Borgard Beach, which is now closed, could be turned into a park. You know, uh, beautiful. Swim over there and uh, look out and think it's a, it's a beautiful outlook. So it's, uh, there's a lot of potential there. But the, the pond itself uh, could use help water quality wise, and I think that would help the watershed since it's connected. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Uh, two things that kind of add to the so they, told them they knew there was a pond behind the library. They didn't know it connected to our river. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, there are clearly these beautiful warblings. Uh, but occasionally, in the last two or three years, it turns out they're not warblers. There's also a pair of goldfish that kind of blend in and actually are slightly different. Because mm -hmm.